Uh, when I perform a um, drug recognition evaluation, it's a 12-step process. Uh, it takes approximately 45 minutes to an hour long. Uh, part of the uh, process, uh, as he stated, I'll be checking the eyes, the pupils, uh, checking the eyes for nystagmus. Uh, I'll be taking vital signs for blood pressure, uh, body temperature, pulse, and uh, you know we'll also be doing some uh, divided attention tests, which are very similar to the standard field sobriety tests that officers use on the road. It's just it's basically an extended version of that. Um, throughout the test, uh, when I check for the vital signs and you know check the eyes and stuff like that, the actual drugs from the different drug categories uh, affect the body differently. Uh, for example, cocaine, which is a stim stimulant, can actually increase a person's uh, pulse, it'll increase their blood pressure, it'll increase their body temperature. Uh, these are things that we look for uh, throughout our, our evaluation examination to try to, to pinpoint uh, what type of drug or, or drug or drugs the person might be under the influence of. Uh, so for example, if I could have a uh, person just have a seat for me. Throughout our evaluation, we'll be going through and we check uh, for pupil size. Not only part of uh, being a drug recognition expert is to try to determine what drug that a person might be under the influence of, but the person, what we think might at the time have been impaired by something, they could be responding to some type of medical emergency, such as a stroke or a diabetic reaction. Uh, throughout this process, when I take the vital signs and I check pupil size, uh, I can at least come to a, some type of determination that this might not be a, a person that's impaired by um, drugs or alcohol and that it might be a medical emergency and we'll be able to uh, res have a, a fire department or uh, ambulance respond with the proper personnel to be able to take that person to get treated. Um, so part of my demonstration we use uh, what's called a pupilometer. Uh, basically what it does is it, it checks the size of the pupil. It checks it in the size of millimeters. And uh, as the person sitting there, I'll have them basically look over my shoulder and look away from me. And I'll use a pupilometer to, to check their pupil size on both sides, um, just to make sure the pupils are equal. Obviously, if, if they were unequal, it, it could show pinpoint a possibility if someone uh, has a medical emergency. Um, <clears throat> also, while we go through it, I'll be checking for, for the person's pulse. Uh, similar to you uh, as athletes would, if you know you could check in the uh, carotid or the brachial, and you, you basically check their pulse. Um, you got to check it three times throughout our evaluation. We want to make sure that the person's just not nervous and their, their heart rate's up for being, you know, in a jail. So we'll take the the pulse three times just to double check, make sure that the pulse uh, is elevated or normal or uh, decreased. Also through our evaluation. A lot of people that might have blood pressure problems uh, have seen blood pressure cuffs. And obviously throughout the evaluation, I check their blood pressure, find out what their blood pressure is, record it. We also use a thermometer, temperature gauge. We'll take their body temperatures, as I stated earlier. Uh, the certain type of drugs will affect a person's uh, body temperature, whether it's increased, decreased, or even possibly normal. Throughout the process, I'll also check for uh, muscle tone. Check for injection sites, uh, you know, people that might use some type of needle or, you know, take it transdermal through the skin, whatever type of drug or narcotic they're on. We'll check their arms, behind the ears, behind the back of the neck. We also uh, would then go on and move on to uh, our divided attention tests, uh, which are very similar, um, as I stated, is the standard field sobriety tests that you would see uh, an officer perform on the road for a drunk driver. So just one example, what I'll have... Uh, Lieutenant Noon, if you could just go ahead and stand. Uh, one of the tests we do is a, uh, it's called a walk and turn test. What I would have them do is stand 
and you place his uh, left foot down on an imaginary line if we had one in the room here. You just place your left foot down, place your right foot in front of your left. Keep your arms down at your sides. Just stay in that position until I uh, explain and demonstrate the test. I don't want you to move throughout this process, through the, the uh, instruction process. When I finish uh, demonstrating and uh, advising you how to perform the test, I'll have you start the test after I'm done. Basically what I want you to do while you're standing in that position with your arms down at your sides, what I want you to do is take nine steps forward, turn around, you're going to take nine steps back. The whole time you perform the test, I want to keep, have you keep your arms down at your sides. You're going to stare down at your feet. When you walk, you're going to count your steps out loud, one, two, three, and you're going to touch the back of your heel to the tip of your toe. Okay. While you're performing the test, again, count out loud when you start the test. I don't want you to stop the test until you're finished. Okay. So as I explain, what I'll do is demonstrate. What you're going to do is you're going to count out loud, one, two, three. Obviously, I'd have you go to nine steps. When you get to your ninth step, keep your lead foot planted on the ground. You're going to take a series of small steps in a circle, and then you're going to count nine steps back. Heel to toe, one, two, three. Okay. So the whole time, again, don't start the test till, or don't stop the test until you're complete. The whole time, keep your arms down at your sides. Count your steps out loud, and when you're ready to start the test, you can start the test. Want me to do the test? Understand? Sure. Understand. All right. An example of a divided attention test, uh, the reason why we have people perform divided attention tests is because we want to uh, simulate uh, a situation that's very similar to driving a vehicle. Okay? It takes multiple uh, senses while you're operating a vehicle. Not only is it its eyesight and hearing and uh, controlling your body function as far as pushing the gas pedal or when to push the brake or when to steer. You're doing multiple things at once, and that's the purpose of a divided attention test, is while you're doing a divided attention test, you're doing multiple things at once. And if a person can't perform the test as an average normal person could do, you could obviously tell that they're impaired by a drug or alcohol.